Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines: Mexican prosecutors to investigate experts in Ayotzinapa disappearance case. NUMSA announces strike after failed talks in South Africa's engineering sector. UK activists reject new health bill pushing privatization of the NHS. Tunisian President Kais Saeed expands power through new decrees. In our first story, Mexico's prosecutor's office has announced an investigation into the 2014 Iguala case. 43 students from the Ayotzinapa Rural Teachers School were abducted on their way to a protest. The former Pena Nieto administration claimed that corrupt policemen in Iguala City had taken the students. They were supposedly handed over to a drug cartel which killed them. The bodies of the students were then burnt and thrown into the San Juan River. However, a 2015 independent report cited witnesses who claimed that the federal and military police were present at the site. The government's claim was also rejected by the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. The prosecutor's office has stated that it will now investigate experts in the case for manipulating evidence. Investigators have discovered around 187 skeletal remains so far. DNA tests have found positive matches for 3 out of the 43 Ayotzinapa students. Special Prosecutor Umar Trejo stated on Wednesday that officials in the case had used illegal practices. This included the use of torture and detention to gain testimonies in support of the official version. Families of the victims also held a march on September 22nd. Mobilizations will continue until September 26th, where a march has been planned in Mexico City. The National Union of Metal Workers of South Africa, or NUMSA, is set to launch an indefinite strike on October 5th. This follows failed wage talks in the country's steel and engineering sector. The Employees Association, SCIFSA, offered a three-year contract with a 4.4% wage increase in the first year. It offered a consumer price index and 0.5% increase in the second year and a 1% increase in the third. Meanwhile, NUMSA had demanded an 8% increase across the board in the first year. This was to be followed by CPI plus 2% each year. NUMSA has argued that workers already signed a standstill agreement in 2020, which effectively froze their wages. It has also rejected a special dispensation provision introduced by employers. This will introduce a new entry rate for employers not paying the minimum wage. NUMSA argues that this will essentially drive down wages in the industry. It has called for a national march on October 5th, which will include all union and non-union workers. NUMSA itself represents over 339,000 workers. We now go to the UK where progressive groups are mobilizing against a new health bill introduced by the Conservative government. Called the Health and Care Bill, the legislation will undergo a third reading in Parliament in October. Activists argue that the bill will reorganize the National Health Service to allow greater privatization. Between 2018 and 19, the NHS was privatized by an estimated 7-22%. to 22%. According to the Unite Union, at least £9.2 billion were transferred to the private sector. This new bill will break the NHS up into 42 integrated care systems. Each will have its own limited budget. As per reports, it will also allow the NHS contracts to be given to private companies without a tendering process. Meanwhile, the NHS has warned that it would need to cut various services unless it receives additional funding. An estimated 5.5 million people are currently on wait lists at NHS hospitals. The government has announced £36 million in funding for the NHS over three years. However, according to the We Own It campaign, the service requires £20 billion immediately. The campaign has been also been pushing for the scrapping of the health and care bill. The government has now pledged that private companies will not be allowed to sit on NHS boards. And finally, Tunisian President Kais Saeed has declared that he can rule by decree and ignore parts of the constitution. He issued a series of decrees in the official gazette on September 22nd. Parliament is still suspended and the immunity granted to lawmakers remains lifted. The president will exercise executive power with the Council of Ministers led by a head of government. Saeed is also reportedly working on changes to the political system. A committee will be formed to draft constitutional amendments. The decrees were issued two months after he seized power in July. Protests against the president were held in the capital of Tunis on September 18th. Hundreds of people gathered outside the National Theatre on Habib Borgiba Street. Chants of the people want the fall of the regime could be heard. pro said counter-protesters were also present at the site. The country's political parties have also called on the military and the judiciary to uphold the rule of law. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.